In this video, we're going to discuss and demonstrate muscle energy for the pelvis, specifically for anterior rotations and posterior rotations. So beginning with an anterior rotation, we're going to have our patient lie supine. So go ahead and lie on your back. And we're going to start with a right anterior rotation. So for our landmarks, our ASIS is going to be inferior and our PSIS is going to be superior. And in muscle energy, since it's a direct technique, we're going to want to position the anominate in the opposite direction to meet the restricted barrier. So we're going to want to bring the ASIS superior and the PSIS inferior to induce a posterior rotation to the restricted barrier. So we have a few different ways we can accomplish that. Can you move a little bit closer to the edge of the table? So we can start by flexing the patient's hip and sitting on the edge of the table. Then we're going to place our hands in their posterior thigh and we're going to induce a little bit of additional flexion. Our goal here is to induce some stretch on the hamstrings, which is going to pull on the ischial tuberosity and draw the innominates into a posterior rotation, which is the restricted barrier we're looking for. So we push into the restricted barrier and then we're going to ask our patient to push against us. So go ahead and push against me. And we're going to provide some isometric resistance for three to five seconds. Then we're going to ask our patient to relax. Go ahead and relax. Then we're going to pause for a moment. And then we're going to move our patient to the next restricted barrier. And go ahead and push against me again. And relax. And pause and move to the next restricted barrier. And then one more time, push and then relax and we're going to pause and move to the next restricted barrier after three to five times we can add an optional passive stretch through the restricted barrier and then return our patient back to neutral and reassess for somatic dysfunction an alternate position we can use that would allow us to have a little bit more direct contact with the landmarks of interest would be as follows we would flex the knee and hip and then we're going to make three contacts. First contact is going to be our shoulder on their knee. So we're going to bring our shoulder into their knee. Our next contact, we're going to take our hand and we're going to be uh, contacting the posterior aspect of the ischial tuberosity. As with any landmark in a sensitive area, we're going to want to make sure to be clear with our patient of where we're going to be putting our hands. So I'm going to be putting my hands on your sit bone. Uh, kind of in the back of the sit bone and I'm going to be pushing on it. It's going to help me put your uh, pelvis into the right position. Okay, great. So for that contact on the ischial tuberosity, we're going to put our hand posterior to the ischial tuberosity here. And then our third contact, we're going to use our other hand and contact the anterior aspect of the anterior superior iliac spine. So again, three contacts, shoulder to the knee, one hand on the ischial tuberosity, and then the other hand on the anterior superior iliac spines. And then we're going to flex the hip while taking advantage of our contacts and induce posterior rotation to the restricted barrier. Once we've met that restricted barrier, we can have our patient push their leg into extension by pushing against us. Go ahead and push against my shoulder. We can provide isometric resistance for three to five seconds and then relax. So they relax, we relax, we're going to pause for a moment, and then we're going to follow into the next restricted barrier. Again, we would repeat this cycle of contraction, relaxation, and moving to the next restricted barrier for a total of three to five times, and then we can add an optional passive stretch, and then return our patient to a neutral position, and reassess for somatic dysfunction. So if instead we were treating a posterior innominant where our landmarks are an ASIS that is superior and a PSIS that is inferior, we're going to want to be positioning our patients so that those landmarks can move in the opposite direction to induce an anterior rotation to the restricted barrier. So we have a couple ways we can do that. We're going to move our patient into abduction and we're going to allow that leg to fall off into extension. We're going to take our other hand and contact their contralateral ASIS to stabilize their pelvis and allow all of the movement to be localized to the right innominate. Now we're going to take our other hand and place it at the distal femur proximal to the knee and we're going to induce more extension until we meet the restricted barrier at the innominate. Now we're going to have our patient push up to the ceiling. Go ahead and push up, which is going to induce flexion and 
engage the muscles that we're looking to relax, and then go ahead and relax. They relax, we relax, and then we advance to the next restricted barrier. Go ahead and push up to the ceiling again. We can provide our isometric resistance for three to five seconds, and then relax. They relax, we relax. We're gonna to move to the next restricted barrier. Go ahead and push up to the ceiling again. And then relax. And then move to the next restricted barrier. So after a total of three to five times, we can add an optional passive stretch and then return our patient back to neutral and reassess for somatic dysfunction. If our patient was a little bit larger or if they were uneasy or unstable on the edge of the table, we can provide some additional stability by changing our position. So we can switch positions and face towards the feet. We're gonna take our thigh and hip and push it against their pelvis. We're gonna take our hand and contact the contralateral ASIS. And then we're gonna take our other hand and abduct and extend the hip. Then we're gonna take again our hand and place it at the distal femur proximal to the knee and position our patient into anterior rotation, which is the restricted barrier. Then we'll have our patient push up to the ceiling again and then relax. And then after a pause, we'll move to the next restricted barrier and then we'll repeat that cycle again three to five times total. We'll add an optional passive stretch as needed and then we'll return our patient back to a neutral position and reassess for somatic dysfunction.